Well, I have to admit, as a consumer, a normal consumer, I prefer a strong euro to a weak one. But that is, of course, a very subjective view and not necessarily one that's economically sound for the country as a whole. But for an economically sound analysis, we have an expert here with us, Ansgar Berke from the University of Duisburg-Essen. Welcome on the show. Good to have you with us. So please tell us, uh, when does a robust euro pose a threat for Europe? If the euro is too, too strong, in a sense, uh, then it might be the case uh, that inflation is going down because imported goods become more cheap. And this is exactly what we do not want to see mm -hmm. right now in the euro area, because some speak of deflationary tendencies in the south, at least of the euro area. So. Okay, uh, th there you mentioned already something about problems, especially in the south, because uh, the eurozone and the uh, common uh, currency, the single currency, certainly has revealed that this scenario can pose problems among various Eurozone member states and they're very, very different economies. There is a survey that makes that very clear because it shows that a common euro exchange rate, we should see it right now, it is very tricky. Germany, for one, can handle a stronger euro exactly of 1.52 against the US dollar. France would be okay with 1.23. The best exchange rate for Greece would be 1 euro zero two against the dollar. So quite different there. How can the ECB make everyone happy? So it cannot do so, of course. It has to orient its monetary policy at the average of the euro area. And uh, concerning its statute, it's even forbidden to look at the exchange rate as a central uh, target. Mm. So you have some program countries or former program countries like Ireland, now Portugal, uh, which uh, have put in much uh, endeavor into becoming more competitive right now. And uh, maybe they are punished by a too strong exchange rate. But Germany's exports depend very much on the quality of its exports. Yeah, it can yeah. afford a high exchange rate. But they're getting punished. I mean, can monetary policies actually solve that, uh, that huge difference between the various member states? And can the ECB at the same time stay an independent body? As a stylized fact, monetary policy can never solve structural problems. Uh, even reform effort uh, goes down uh, if you are too expansionary. So it cannot be a standard. Uh, you have to look at political independence of the central bank. Of course, mm. the central bank has become politically dependent, as we have seen in the past, because the ECB was a member of the so-called Troika and the program countries. And now look at France. France uh, misses its uh, deficit target. Quite clearly. So they want the ECB to act again ECB in their to act favor. Instead, mm. Because uh, they are ashamed of their bad export uh, competitiveness performance. Well, Mr. Becker, we've got the uh, EU parliamentary elections coming up. And there are some parties that suggest that there should be a kind of two-class eurozone. One for the weak south and one for the strong north, at least temporary. Would that be a solution? I don't think that this can work because if you segment the euro area and have some weak a group of weak countries, they would be punished with a flexible exchange rate. And uh, this is just a malus uh, if you exit such kind of common building like the euro area and they have to increase interest rates even further to keep their currency strong. Okay. Well, Ansgar Belke, thank you very much for filling us in.